Hello friends, welcome to the video. It is that time of year now that we're getting closer to the end of the year, really getting closer or maybe not so close to our reading goals. I am personally like three books behind on my reading goal, but that's why I wanted to do this video, my 10 before the end, 10 books I wanna read before the end of the year. So let's get into it. So I tend to read a lot of lit fiction and fantasy. For So for these first three books I'm gonna talk about, they are kind of helping me get out of those categories a little bit, diversify my reading. But the very first one it is also, I would say a classic. It is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. If you've never seen this movie, it is so freaking hilarious. It is a sci-fi movie, sci-fi book with a lot of like British humor. So think Monty Python, think Red Dwarf, even like uh, Doctor Who, that kind of British humor. I really love that movie, so I want to read this book. And if you want a feeling of how either the book or the movie is going to be, I haven't actually read the book, so I don't know for sure. But please look up Thanks for All the Fish from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy movie. It's so funny. So basically the plot of this book is that the world is being exploded by aliens who are much smarter than us humans and they basically said hey we've given you all these warnings that we're destroying your planet because we basically are doing this giant like corporation thing it's it's actually really funny and less like scary um but our main character gets scooped up from his friend who is actually an alien i believe and, um, but the best part, I think, of the movie, at least, is all the dolphins knew that this was going to happen, and they were like, we were trying to warn you this whole time, but thanks for all the fish that you gave us. So they have, like, a whole song <laughs> in the movie about it. But this is, like, only 200 pages, so I think it'll be really helpful um, to kind of get me out of this current reading slump that I'm in. And it's just, like, look at this. It's so 80s. I absolutely love it. I got this from the library. Speaking of dolphins, speaking of, I guess, whales as well, the next book is a nonfiction book, which I am trying to find some nonfiction books, again, that I love. I tend to love nonfiction books about animals and plants, um, and specifically about whales. I think I have about, like, five-ish nonfiction books about whales. I just, I love whales. Okay. I love whales. Um, and this is specifically about whale songs and there's a lot of like actual science and stuff in this book. Also pictures. So I'm very excited about this book. I always love just like learning new things and getting into the nitty gritty of things that I'm like hyper fixated on. But the next one is I'm trying to figure out the type of romance that will get me more into romance. I've been trying to do that this whole year. I found out that I do like basically like this Jane Austen slow burn Regency type of romance. I'm not a big fan of Bridgerton, but I did like that kind of setting. So I am going to try out my uh, Rogue to Ruin here. It looks just like so cute. I'm going to Vegas in a couple weeks and I think a romance is the perfect type of book to read in Vegas. But basically our main female character is kind of like a detective trying to figure out like this like kind of scheme that's going on and believes that their main male character is a part of the scheme. And then, you know, of course some romance happens um, I just really love this. I love the cover. It's nice and pink. I think it will be a great little light romp for my Vegas trip. My next two are in the like unhinged kind of category, which I absolutely love. An unhinged female character. This first one is one that I is next on my TBR and it is Rouge. And my husband watches these videos and told me that I mispronounced this book in the last video. I said rogue, but I just want to point out if you look at these two freaking words, they look very similar. 
And when you've been like out and about and you just kind of look at a word, sometimes you mispronounce it, okay? If you've read Bunny or you've heard of Bunny, it is from the same author. It is about this woman who becomes obsessed with beauty and wellness um, due to her mother who is kind of estranged from her, is kind of, is pretty like a cold mother and just wants to become closer to her mother um, and just kind of gets sucked up into this beauty wellness cult. And I believe that most of the book is based in La Jolla, which is like a suburb of San Diego. I'm currently in San Diego, so I think this will be great. And I think it being based in La Jolla is chef's kiss based on the subject of the book so i really do want to read this in la jolla at some point um during my reading journey of rouge all right our next unhinged lady is from my husband by Maud ventura <laughs> did i do anything i don't know and this woman instead of wellness, becomes obsessed with her husband and keeping her husband happy and making sure her husband still loves her and just it it becomes a little bit too obsessive. It's giving Stepford Wives a little bit. I think it, okay. Oh, and I got like a cute little uh, bookmark from Booksmith where I got this. But I love an unhinged rich lady and that's what this will give me. So we are excited. My next three, four books are fantasy books, which I've just been loving. Fantasy, the world building, the escapism, especially right now, has been really great. But the first fantasy book that has been so freaking hyped, you guys. This has been, it's One Dark Window. It's all over Bookstagram. Everyone's been hyping it up. I know it has some dark romance in it as well. Um, so I want to be a part of the hype a little bit, though I'll give you guys my honest review because I personally didn't really love Fourth Wing that much, and that was also, I feel like, equally hyped. Um, Akatar, I did like Akatar. So we shall see. I do like a dark fantasy romance. Um, it's kind of hard to say exactly what this is about because fan fantasy books have so much world building typically and I believe this one has like three books to the series, possibly more. We shall see with this one, but I do want to be part of it. I want to be part of the hype. I always feel like I'm behind, so I do want to read this before the end of the year. This next fantasy book has been hyped, but it's been hyped for a while. And this is The Assassin's Appren Apprentice by Robin Hobb. And I've specifically wanted to read a Robin Hobb book for a while. It's been hyped by booktubers who I very much feel like I have similar tastes to, specifically Peru's Project really loves Robin Hobb, so I want to give it a whirl. I feel like I I started reading the Stormlight Archive series because, because of her, and I'm obsessed with that series, so I'm trusting her on this one. And yes, the sticker can be taken off. It's already really bothering me. But I obviously got this one at Barnes & Noble. But The Assassin's Apprentice is about a bastard son of a prince who is kind of kept secret from the courts and the royalty, but is tutored to become an assassin and kind of his journey uh, through that. I just, I just trust the world building. I've heard really, really good things about Robin Hobb and I just know I'm gonna love it. It's one of those books that's like, you know you're gonna love, so you like push it off. So you push it off for a while and then you are like, why didn't I read that sooner? So I wanna read it sooner. My last physical fantasy book that I have, I'll be honest, I bought this because of the cover because you guys, this cover, like it is oh beautiful i mean like look at that look at it it's it's like sage green <laughs> 
So I did honestly buy it because of the cover. So it better be freaking good or else I'll be so mad at myself. But this is The Fatal Kiss by Alicia Jasinska. I think she's Russian or Polish or something. But it is by Alicia, right? I think it's a YA fantasy romance book. And it is about a nymph who is cursed to live in the water and needs to have a kiss in order to be freed. Um, but all everyone sees her as a monster, so no one wants to kiss her. And our other character here is the grandson of a witch who is losing his powers and he is kind of agrees with the nymph to find her somebody to kiss and we can all see where this is going i just feel like this is just going to be such a cute romance fantasy book based on these like old mythical characters we all know and love um so it's just adorable i mean like okay i'm just obsessed with i mean even if it's bad I, it can't be that bad. I just can't. The, just the the tropes. It's just so cute. I just, it's adorable. I think it's going to be such a good cozy, like, late November, early December book. I just, I do appreciate romance a little bit more at this time of year, just like cuddling up with somebody. So I am so excited to read this book. I think it's going to be very, very cute. So my next two books are in order to almost finish or finish a series so the first of these that i want to finish reading by the end of the year is the fourth book of the stormlight archive series by brandon sanderson and that is the rhythm of war ideally i would want to finish it by the end of november but i'm still on the third book and i still have like 10 at, oh, i saw like 12 hours left of that book so I don't think I'm gonna finish that and then also finish like I think these books are like 24 hours or 30 hours or something so I, I don't think I'm going to do that I just I don't see it happening but I absolutely love the series these are like some of my favorite books Ever. the world building is just amazing and one thing I will say is I don't feel like has been talked about in terms of the Stormlight Archive series and this is a little bit of a spoiler so skip ahead a bit if you don't want to be spoiled but I feel like Brandon Sanderson does an amazing job of representing mental illness within these characters for example for Shalon I feel like this is a great example of dissociative identity disorder which has past been uh, referred to as multi-personality disorder and a conceptualization of that disorder and how um, psychologists tend to conceptualize DID. So if you're in the third book or if you've read the third book before, that is a great example of how DID develops and how you kind of bring it back to yourself, to one person. Um, it's not necessarily like pushing out all these personalities but it's like all the personalities are you they've just helped you in these different ways right in these different types of situations and this early childhood trauma is typically why people develop DID so I I, I just really loved his representation of Shalon within that and then also with Callahan Caladan Cal has a great representation of PTSD and post-traumatic growth. So it's basically somebody goes through like a traumatic event and they obviously have um, these things that happen to them and these symptoms, but that because of that as well, they actually become like a better person or more insightful or kind of change who they are for the better. That is basically what post-traumatic growth is. And then lastly for Dalinar, great example of alcohol use disorder in the context of trauma and why people use alcohol when they've gone through something like that. And also of what we call moral injury, specifically moral injury where you've done something bad and you can't really reconcile with that. So if you're like a psychology major or something, and if this has helped you, maybe you want to read these books, amazing. Um, or if it's maybe helped you with a paper that you have to write, all the better. But I just feel like no one's kind of had that conversation or a discussion about 
these characters. So I don't know. That's just my pers my perspective as a psychologist. And then lastly, I want to finish the Neapolitan uh, series by Elena Fronte. This is the fourth and final book of the series, The Story of the Lost Child. And this series follows these two girls in a very poor town in Italy. And it follows them as adults, having children, getting married, um, all of the complicated emotional things of that. If you like the like emotional parts of Sally Rooney, you would love this series. The one thing with the series is the covers look so terrible. I hate these covers. They are awful. They're the reason why I didn't read this series sooner. Please don't look at these covers and think that you know what's going on. Um, if you just love like emotional dialogue, amazing understanding of social relationships, specifically between two women, two girls, amazing. I also want to shout out Kevin Can F himself. Um, they gave the first book of the series to, like somebody gave the first book of the series to one of the characters and I was like, oh, that's such a great representation of their friendship and kind of the character development between these two female characters. So I absolutely love the series. I think it's a great series to read in the winter. I got into the series last year in the winter around Christmas time. So I want to finish it in the same time. So these are all the 10 books I want to read by the end of the year. I really, really want to read them. I need to read more than 10 to meet my goal of 50 books. So I better read them. But please tell me some books that you guys want to finish by the end of the year and we can maybe get a little bit of inspiration, a little bit of accountability, but I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.